The most requested thing that I get in Civilization 6 is to play a game on marathon speed. Now for those of you who don't know, marathon speed is the game speed that makes everything take three times as long. If you need to build a settler and it'll take 10 turns, on marathon it'll take 30 turns. Now you can probably understand why. I take a bit of a dim view of playing the game on marathon speed, because it really just kind of drags the game out. However... I was watching a recent Spiffing Brit video where he plays Civilization 5 on marathon speed at Songhai in order to exploit their pillaging of barbarians mechanic. And that gave me a devilish little idea. Because in the New Frontier Pass, the Civilization 6 developers implemented the Barbarian Clans mode, which allows you to park a unit onto a barb camp and continuously raid it for gold per turn. Now in a normal game of Civilization 6 on a standard speed, getting three gold per turn from a barbarian encampment isn't that big of a deal. But then I discovered that the gold you get from those barbarian encampment scales with game speed and you can pillage it three times as much because the standard cooldown on the barb camp is 10 turns regardless of the speed you're playing on. Which means for every single barb camp I can capture this game I'll have a 15 gold per turn bonus. That's pretty nice. Now you throw into the fact that I'm playing as Gorgo and I've got the Thermopylae bonus that'll give me 100% because it scales with game speed of the unit's combat strength when I kill it. That means if I kill a warrior with 30 combat strength, I will get 30 culture. And you know what the other wonderful thing is? Every time you raid a barbarian encampment for gold, it spawns a unit. So I'm going to be drowning in gold and culture this game. So hop along for the ride and thank you so much Spiffing Brit for this wonderful idea. I mean, theoretically it's stolen content, but listen, there's only so many interesting Civilization 6 videos you can make and this is one I'm finally excited for in a long time. Now we spawned here on this little hill, but I think the best place to go is to settle on this geothermal because if we settle on it, we will start with a wonderful extra one science per turn and we have a two food, two production tile to work away, which will allow me to build a warrior in about 24 turns because they cost 120 production. Now, imagine if I had no production tiles, this warrior would take 40 turns. 40 turns. On standard speed, a scout would take about 10 turns in this build. You have to divide all the numbers by three to get the true cost. So like this would be a six turn scout. Yoink a little tribal village and I got a relic. Oh my God, that is so broken. How? <laughs> How do I keep finding relics in my game? I actually, people aren't going to believe me. I need to like reload the turn and, and, and not have that be a relic because people, people just aren't going to believe me that I keep getting them. It's absurd. I mean, I'll take it because it's beautiful. Another hundred, oh, 120 gold. Thank you very much. A lovely tribal village. We have found our very first victim here, the new swarm clan, and they have a simple little slinger stationed in it. And our warrior should be able to make quick work of that slinger. And the beautiful thing is, you can invade the barbarian encampment, raid it for gold, and then immediately turn around and buy units from that same barb camp. So we can steal their money and then buy their wares with the money they stole. This is like going into a shop in Oblivion and like rinsing the guy for all the money he's worth and then selling it back to him immediately. Only he's a willing participant in his own, like, <laughs> bankruptcy. Right, let's pillage for 150 gold. Thank you very much. And then I can immediately come in here and buy myself a warrior. And then I can go send this warrior to capture this barb camp. So I've essentially initiated uh, an infinite printing machine where I can print a unit every few turns to go capture another barb camp which I then use to generate more gold, which prints more units, which captures more barb camps. And like we're now beginning what is essentially an infinite cycle of unit production. And it's absurdly powerful. Look at that six culture from killing a slinger. It's a beautiful sight. I wonder if I can yoink this barb camp. I hope they attack because if they do, I'll be able to yoink it. Now, what else do we want to build here? I could get a free settler. Oh man, that feels almost too broken. Although to be fair, maybe I'd be better off getting God of the Forge and building an absurd number of units. Because if you think about it, the more units that I build, the more cities I can conquer, the more barbarian encampments I can conquer. Yeah, let's go for God of the Forge. I cannot believe it. This lined up so perfectly for me to yoink this barb camp. Get the 30 culture, boost bronze working, finish code of laws, and I'll be able to pillage this for 150 gold. I could even kill Johannesburg's units, although I think I was the first to meet them, so maybe I'll stay friends with them for now. I love playing as Greece because you can just fit so many cards into your government. It's a wonderful, wonderful time. Oh, it's way too tempting to kill these Johannesburg units. I'm sorry, Johannesburg. I'm so sorry. 
but your unit was just sitting there. <laughs> that was worth 30 culture. I have to. I apologize. But it was necessary. Oh, he killed another unit. Thank you for the 30 culture. Amazing. And I might be able to grab this builder too. Let's raid a little clan down here. Thank you very much. Yoink free builder. God, why would you ever build anything yourself when you could just steal everything you need from barbarian camps? and city-states. It's such a simple life. You just raid 150 gold from your camps, you buy more units, you send them off to find more camps, and it's just an infinite cycle of beautiful unit production. I'll take another 150 gold, thank you very much, bringing me up to 412 gold per turn. If I can capture this third barbarian encampment, I'll be up to 45 gold per turn. That would be the equivalent of, on turn 15 of a standard speed game, I'd be making 15 gold per turn. Hopefully you're starting to see why this is oh so broken. Yoink, 150 gold. Oh, it's just free, free money and free, free culture. What a beautiful life it is as Gorgo. I'm up to 784 gold and I can use my ill-gotten gains to get myself a monument. And sure, why wouldn't I? That's another two culture per turn. Oh, it's an honor to meet you, Genghis Khan. How are you doing? How are you keeping? Let's have a look here. So he's got a, a very healthy 20 military strength and I've got a 120. And he's got a very healthy four science per turn. I've got five science per turn. Yeah, I wonder who's doing better right now. It's a, it's a bit of an open question, a bit of a head scratcher there. I wonder who's stronger. Surely it couldn't be the player who's completely farming uh, the barbarians <laughs> for money and culture. No, 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 no. The AI Mongolian Empire, they are definitely stronger. Oh, we found our fourth little barbarian encampment here. Nice to meet you, sea ghost. Although annoyingly, they are a seaside one, so they'll start spawning galleys. So I'll have to send a couple of archers down here. The AI does do its best attempt at disrupting your plans, but I don't think they're going to be able to stop me. Honestly, it's even better when they spawn spearmen, because spearmen are worth 36 culture when you kill them. So I'm always just really happy <laughs> that I see a spearman in a, in a barb camp. Oh, a fifth barb camp for us to start hitting. Hello, nice to meet you. This is the Setting Sun clan. The great thing about this too is if this was a normal game, these units would have already teched up and become like archers and crossbows and swordsmen. But because it's a marathon game, they're going to stay as these really low tech units for a long time. I waited an extra turn so that I could line up all of my pillages together. One pillage, two pillage and three pillage. That's 450 gold every 10 turns. Absolutely insane. I just finished researching bronze working, which has given me access to what is arguably the most powerful unit in the entire game the Spartan Hoplite. Now there's a very particular reason this unit is so strong and it's because it gets plus 10 combat strength if there's at least one adjacent Hoplite unit, which means it's a baseline 38 combat strength unit. So we're basically getting Swordsmen, but they cost a lot less production and no iron. Swordsmen are 90 production and 20 iron, as well as two maintenance, whereas Hoplites are 65 production, no strategic resource and one maintenance. And now we are going to start spamming an infinite number of hoplites. Look at that bad boy and his beautiful shield. Oh no, the barbarians are heading to my capital looking to get some revenge. Well, I can't allow that, can I? Let's also get the war started on Bandar Brunei. I think it's time I stop pretending that this game is anything resembling a peaceful game. And here it comes, ladies and gentlemen, the Giga Pillage. We're on 470 gold right now. One pillage, two pillage, three pillage. Four pillage, five pillage. We're now on 1,220 gold on turn 85 of a marathon game. I can just print hoplites all day long. Nice to meet you, Patcha Cutie. I'll be over to deal with you in a little while. Don't you worry about that now. Just let me build up my army and retake my barb camps. This is the wonderful thing as well. Every time I do this, I clear these barb camps. It's like a, another injection of culture too. And we start getting closer and closer to political philosophy. Dozens upon dozens of turns being shaved off this every time we do a pillage. Mongolia is getting a little bit in my way. And now that I have my signature unit, I think it's about time that we started killing our neighbours. That's right, Mongolia, your cities are now going to be under new management. Look at all that damage and culture I just slurped up from the corpses of my enemies. That's right. If you want to know how culture works, just bash a man over the head and then slurp up all the culture that comes out. 
the Greek way. This is where the build goes from being, okay, I can kind of see this, it's kind of broken, it's kind of overpowered. This is where it goes from being busted to bussin, all right? Because we could pick up oligarchy now, which will give us plus four combat strength on our already broken hoplites. And then we can plug in conscription, which makes our hoplites completely free of maintenance because they only take one gold per turn to maintain. God, I love it. It's so hilariously broken. Did I also mention that you get plus one combat strength for every military policy slotted? And I currently have four military policies slotted in. So these hoplites now are running around with plus eight combat strength, but that's if they're not adjacent to another hoplite. These are 44 combat strength hoplites. This is absurdity. These guys they might actually need, like, there needs to be a balance pass done in the game. Like, an emergency patch needs to be triggered upon the discovery of this exploit. But come on, to be honest, we all know that Civilization VI is dead in terms of updates, and they're probably working on the next iteration of Civilization Beyond Earth. Except it'll be like Civ Beyond the Milky Way? They should really just remaster Alpha Centauri. Come on, it's what the people want. Just remaster it. Give the people what they want, Sid. We're crying out for a real remaster. Beyond Earth was fun, but it didn't live up to the name. Actually, I wonder if there are any broken strategies in Beyond Earth that have just been lurking beneath the surface for the last, like, 10 years. That might be a fun thing to do to see if we can find something that breaks the game there. Also, do you know what time it is? It's time to do the raiding world tour again. Boom. Oh my god, look at that gold. Another 1,300 gold in the bank. And what's that? Now we just buy more hoplites that it cost no maintenance. Like a, a trio of hoplites at this point could run around the world and just take it over. Like I'm going to two or three shot the city of Bandar Brunei. And why would I keep it around when I could just have the city? It was practically free for me to kill them. Oh, an Aztec Eagle Warrior. This would be a delightful addition to my units. Now, if I killed a unit with the Eagle Warrior, I will get a free builder. And so this is going to be the third unit I send off with this pair. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe I just got an Eagle Warrior. That's actually absurd. Look at this, the 41 combat strength unit. Th okay, somebody, somebody's like watching this game at Civ HQ and just like pressing buttons to make this build even more overpowered, like live in real time. Right, Bandar Brunei, it's time to blow it up. Thank you very much. That's my city now. We will be keeping it. Now, I wonder what Bandar Brunei is going to do at its time. That's right. It's going to build endless hoplites. Oh, 42 culture from killing. Uh, a, a beautiful Aztec eagle warrior. God, that is just so nice. Oh, by the way, it's not... I don't get 100% of the unit's combat strength as culture. I get 150% of the unit's combat strength as culture when I kill them. Because it's marathon speed. It's so busted and broken. Or sorry, it's 125% of the unit's combat threat, not 150. Listen, I gotta get my numbers right. Every time I get my numbers wrong in a YouTube video, the comments are just filled with like, eh, potato, you're actually wrong about this really weird esoteric thing that you misquoted. You silly chatters. Don't you know that I get things wrong on purpose just to drive engagement on my videos? The ultimate five head play. Play so poorly that people can't help but comment on it. Did I? I found another barb camp. What is going on? How, why is this one just here for free? I mean, I'll take the 150 gold. But why Why is this here like this? It, it shouldn't be. <laughs> it shouldn't be here. What's going on? What? I need to get units over there to claim it. Ooh, I got myself on a Kichita, a free scouting unit. This will help me find more people to attack. And another barb camp. Oh my god, I'm going to be swimming in gold. Yoinkarino, thank you very much for the free builder. I didn't even have to kill a unit with the Eagle Warrior to get that builder. It was just sitting there in the open waiting for me to take it. <laughs> Look at this. I'm two shotting Mongolia's capital. Oh, thank you so much for your plus five era score from killing another player. That is a sight to behold. Every new city that I acquire is just another place for me to spam hoplites from. The AI started to denounce me because they finally realized that I am the end game late game crisis, except it's only turn 100 in a marathon game. So in fact, I am just the early game crisis that every game will have to go through. Johannesburg is fully surrounded. Goodbye. Oh, if I had a third hoplite here, I could have killed it in a single turn. Yoinkarino. Thank you for the city. I appreciate it. Goodbye, Johannesburg. You belong to me now. I almost do have a golden age here, surprisingly. I, I, I thought I would have had it a long time ago, but apparently 
uh, you know, <laughs> completely generating, you know, the United States GDP in uh, 240, 70 BC just isn't quite enough to get yourself the, the equivalent of a golden age. Oh, my stars. It's a glorious day. It is the time to pillage has come. OK, 196 gold. And then I do my pillages. And then I have a casual 1096 gold. Oh, my stars. That's one, two, three four five six encampment pillages that let me buy even more warriors so i can control even more of these camps and then don't forget that next turn when these uh <laughs> you know these camp spawn units i'm going to generate an insane amount of culture from killing them and just to give you an idea of how much culture this is generating for me for every 100 culture you generate you get one of these tourists so you can see the best ai has currently generated maybe seven tourists i've generated 20 which means that's about 2000 tourism in a hundred turns and it's only going to get faster oh nice to meet you patrick cutie it would be a shame if something were to happen to your cities and the thing that's going to happen to your cities are, is my hoplites in fact there's basically nothing you can do about it patrick cutie so you may as well just surrender to me and give me your cities right now these poor poor incan cities just getting obliterated as i roll through them with spearmen oh yes i will keep these cities i will keep these cities forever because they are my cities your pitiful slinger won't be able to stop me damn it <laughs> i i don't want to one shot the slinger with a with a hoplite because i won't get the free builder if i kill him so i have to attack him twice with my eagle warrior come on free builder nice a free builder god this is just so absurd just stonking my way around the map stealing gold stealing builders yoinking cities there really is nothing quite like a civilization six power trip the city of wanuku will be mine as well thank you very much and pillage your trade route as well but what have i taken now like one two three four five and soon to be six cities at basically no cost you're never this is absurd you're never going to see anything like this in a normal game and also it's pillage turn hello thousands and thousands of gold thank you very much god just with every click of this pillage button i feel my coffers refill i would just like to point out that the ai has like a collective military score of just about 100 when i'm sitting on 500 military score it would be genuinely terrifying to be in the shoes of the ai right now just imagine the hordes of spartan hoplites running around terrorizing the world flaunting their stolen barbarian gold as they plunder and occupy your cities and then grind up your bones into culture it's a very upsetting thought. Honestly, every time I start to approach pillage turn, it, it's like Christmas coming. I start getting excited. You know, I, I got to spend all the gold and, you know, I got all these new units and then I have to wait until I can do it again. But then when it starts coming around, I can think about, oh, what am I going to buy this time? Shall I buy 10 horsemen? No, I think I'll just continue to produce hoplites. Today, it is pillage time. 150 cash, 150 cash. No, I misclicked them off the, the goddamn thing. Whoops. <laughs> I ruined it. It was all synced up and I misclicked it. Oh, look at this money flow. 900 cash. Now, this is also a beautiful moment because I'm now one governor title from being able to promote Reina with contractor, which will allow me to use all of this ill-begotten gold on purchasing districts. Is it ill-begotten or ill-gotten? I actually don't remember. One of them sounds right and one of them sounds wrong. Let me know in the comments which one you think it is. Being bad at English to farm comments. Honestly, I, I, I don't think there really is much room in the world for someone who to, to farm engagement by being bad at things. Maybe there's a couple of people who can pull it off, but I don't know if that's a winning strategy long term. Here comes all the barbarians that I can then turn into culture. Hunza, more like Gonza, especially when I pillage this 700 gold from their mines. God, this is just a ridiculous amount of cash for anyone to have. Ooh, somebody unlocked pikemen. Somebody unlocked pikemen. I can get pikemen. A thousand gold for a pikeman. Oh my God, this unit is ridiculously strong. Well, to be fair, it's actually, it's about on par with, with, with a, um, with a hoplite. But it's a thousand gold hoplite that makes all of my cities near impossible to attack. If he sits in one of my cities, there's nothing that anyone can do to it because he just give, brings it all the way up to 50 combat strength using his melee strength. That's amazing. That's amazing. I love that. Where else would you see the likes of it? 
Yoinkarino, Honza belongs to me. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate your contribution to the Spartan Empire. Arguably the most contested city in the world, Hong Kong, shall be mine. Thank you very much. Easy clap, easy cap. Should probably decide to take out the Congo now. But in all honesty, do I even really have to think about it? Like when your units are this strong, this early... God, I have so much more respect for hoplites after this game. I mean, who knew a bunch of shieldy boys with pointy sticks could be so powerful? We need I need like that meme image, you know, it's like who would win a few pointy boys versus the entire world? I guess why not declare war on the Congo? Now's as good a time as any. Also, by the way, I can come in here and hire man at arms. <laughs> man at arms. Oh my god, look at this bad boy. Another 45 combat strength unit. Looks like Coupe is in the game and he's honestly the second strongest person with a 72 military strength compared to my 758. I really don't think there's much they can do to stop me here. I mean, what are you, what are you gonna do? Like, <laughs> when, the, when the Greek hoplite comes for you? The only option you really have is to run and hide. There's nothing, there's nothing they can do. I have become inevitable. My fury, my power, my poise, everything about me. My glorious Greeks flood the world with their pointy sticks. The whole world basically thinks I'm the devil. And to be honest, I'm not really sure that I can blame them considering what I've been up to. I don't even know what kind of dedication I should go for. Eh, let's all in. Let's all in on culture. That sounds like a fun plan to me. Getting a ridiculous plus one culture per specialty district that I get. Now that doesn't sound like a whole lot right now, but you just wait. The second I kill a unit and take defensive tactics, which I just did, I should get myself another governor title and I pop that into Reina and then I can come into my capital and now I can buy districts with gold. <laughs> now I gotta wait for another Christmas turn. Five more turns and I can do a big bunch of gold pillaging and then buy some districts. God, look at that 45 combat strength when I put a pikeman inside Mpinda. That is just gross. Wait, hang on. Why, why are pikemen spawning this early? There's no way anyone has enough science to unlock pikemen. So how are pikemen spawning? Because there's... Wait a minute. Is the unit tech of these camps completely detached from the game speed? Surely it couldn't be. So how are they making man-at-arms? Is it when the tech is boosted, maybe? Or is the final hidden player Babylon? I feel like it's got to be one of those two. Nothing else would really explain why the tech level of the barbs jumped so suddenly. There's got to be a Babylon in the game. Otherwise, I genuinely have no idea what to tell you. Because now, annoyingly, this barb camp is spawning man-at-arms. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. But it is worth 66 culture when you kill him. <laughs> oh man, that is absolutely, never mind. I'm so glad that it's spawning them now. Who knew that such a blessing would come from something that should be a curse? Hatusa Matata, what a wonderful day. I take your city for the rest of the day. Don't know how to finish that song. Listen, I'm singing. I'm happy. I'm having a good time. How could you not be having a good time when you're playing a build as broken as this? Hey, look, we found ay 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 my favorite volcano. Oh, look at that wonderful culture. Oh man, I would love to get a settler over there and to claim that. Look at all that food and culture. Jeez. Practically salivating at the mouth looking at it. Do you know what's even more hilarious about this? Is I'm generating a bunch of grievances with the AI, but they bleed away at the normal pace. So even though I've gone around and like basically blown the entire world up, the people aren't that upset with me over it. Also, why is the city named after Poland? What? This, why does Nubia have a Polish city name? I need to like reinstall the game or like verify the integrity of it. I've been getting very weird bugs lately. And I think this is just owing to the fact that I've had Civ installed on the same computer without reinstalling it for like the last four or five years. <laughs> I, think, I, think it's start, I think the cracks are starting to show now in the programming. Oh, what a beautiful day. It is the pillage turn. The pillage turn has come. 
honestly it feels a bit like the purge turn like i just go around and i just like yoink all of the money that i can out of all of these barb camps but with that healthy thousand gold to the bank i will go ahead and buy myself a government plaza and not too long after i'll be able to grab myself an acropolis as well i've been pillaging for cash and it's been going exceptionally good for me mabanza and congo more like Mbainza and Congo. See you later, nerd. Get the hell out of here. Thanks for the era score. Thanks for the empire. So long. And thanks for all the hoplites. Yoinkarino. Nubia is next. Oh, there we go. Oh, Poland was in the game. Well, I'm not going to liberate Poland. <laughs> That's my cities now. Thank you. Apparently, Nubia got a little bit cheeky earlier in the game and killed Poland themselves. Oh, wait. Poland isn't actually dead. I, I wonder how... Man at arms appeared, and what the hell was Poland doing settling over here when their cities are over here? Poland, what have you been doing this game? They've lost it. They've gone mad with power. Hey, I'll take the Fountain of Youth, thank you very much. An extra five healing per turn on my hoplites does seem quite bazed. <laughs> I'm gonna kill them before they even finish the Edamananki. <laughs> Get destroyed, AI. Bye bye, Nubia. Thank you for your cities and the five era score that I get for killing you. Of course, I will be keeping the city, their capital city. But when it comes to a domination victory, I think I only need three more cities to win the game Naguli Mapu, Poland's capital, and then the Maurian capital. And I do believe we are well on our way to getting all of them. It's actually insane that I have feudalism. It's literally turn. 149 in normal turn speed that's like turn 50 and i have feudalism on turn 50. i think greece might be one of the strongest speed run saves in the game still especially on marathon what in the name of christ is poland doing settling their cities so far apart they have like wroclaw over here Lods over here and then their capital is here like they were just like if i put a city here and i put a city here then surely everyone will respect my borders and i can just claim all this land unfortunately poland much like history nobody respects your borders and you will be taken insert sad poland noises i was actually i was looking up <laughs> i was looking up something about about the the, the historical kingdom of poland and uh, I, I read something that, that said that basically like the entire Commonwealth came down because there was one guy who was just being a massive jerk with his votes in the, um, oh my God, what did they call it? It was not, not like the Landsmeet or something. I mean, Poland had this like democratic body and this one guy had like the votes required because he was like an ancient lord of some place or another. And he just wouldn't vote to raise an army or something. And <laughs> it was, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was, it was just like, it was the Jagellon court or something. I don't remember. He just, he refused to vote uh, in the way that he should have. And the entire kingdom of Poland came apart as a result. Then again, you know, you, you read these things on the internet and you never know if they're actually true. What is true though, is that we are absolutely demolishing this game. Goodbye, Poland. I've only known you a few turns, but thank you for your capital city and the plus five error score. <laughs> if this was a real-time game, I would have almost completely dominated the world in 50 turns. I reckon that's what I'm going to do uh, with the title and thumbnail here. Depending on how quickly I beat the game, I'll just divide how long it took me by three and then have that as the clickbait title. So like if I beat the game in, you know, 180 turns, it'll be like the 45 turn uh, speed run or whatever, or the 60 turn speed run. I don't, I don't care what it is. And I don't care that it's clickbait because I've explained it and you guys can't hate me for it now because I've justified my actions. <laughs> well, justified is maybe the wrong word. I at least explained them. I hired a galley from this encampment and luckily enough it spawned over here. I thought it might spawn over here in Sparta because I, I kept being tempted to hire a galley from this city-state, but it would just end up in this lake over here. Although then again, it doesn't really matter anymore. This is like, you know, my hubris. Look how rich I am. I put a, I put a expensive military ship in a lake and there's nothing you can do about it. This is like people who build palaces to their, you know, to, to their greed or whatever. Me, I put a galley in a lake for gold such a rebel speaking of gold actually i should probably get this acropolis that i've been talking about forever look at that a plus four acropolis disgusting 
absolutely disgust. Oh, and I get to take control of Wolin now. Now, the really cool thing about Wolin is it basically turns all of your units into Civ 5 units where they generate great general points when they kill units. So that's going to be really nice. Although I don't really have a huge amount of use for a great general, it'll be nice to get one. It's just a nice to have, you know? Time to declare the final war against Maori. See you later, Coupe. It's time for you to meet your maker. And it just so happens to be that a hoplite is your maker. Worship the mighty hoplite as their pointy sticks rain down upon you with their furious blows. I wonder how much a legion is for a kill. Let's have a look there. 60 culture for killing a legion. Amazing. I know meet your maker usually means to go see God, but in this game, hop like their God. Boom. The Maori are dead. Only one city remains. The city of Nagulumapu. God, look how huge this empire is. It's turn 160 and I've almost dominated the entire world. The only problem I'm running into is that the Mapuche actually have really, really good combat strength against me. Because I'm in a golden age, so he gets plus 10 versus civilizations in a golden age. That's a little bit annoying, but sure. It's not the end of the world. I mean, technically, they're just like basic spearmen now. Because I already get plus 10 combat strength myself. I feel like every time I'm doing one of these challenges, I somehow manage to find the exact perfect sieve to like be annoying and make my game difficult. It's usually someone like America or Nubia. This has to be like the most perfect choke point in Civilization VI history because I've had an absolute nightmare trying to get any of my units through here for the last like 10 turns. Genuinely have never seen a more perfect choke point. Like they couldn't be further than me through a little weird little peninsula thing, buying them as much time as possible, slowing down my speed run. That's just typical Civ 6. It's just typical video games, really. You're doing really, really well. And then some tiny little thing throws off your game. And then before you know it, your keyboard is smashed into a thousand pieces. And you have to explain to your mother why you need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> it's never actually happened to me, but it would be a good story. I'm sorry, mom. I got killed in Fortnite, so I just smashed my keyboard. My apologies, mother. But I mean, if you compare our military strength, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win this war owing to the fact that I have over, what is that, 30 times his military score? Yeah, I think I'm doing all right. Carpet of Doom has arrived. There is nothing you can do anymore. Accept your fate. Let your memes be dreams and your dreams be memes. And don't you dare try to stop me any longer. Shout out to the spiffing Brit for giving me the idea for this video. And congratulations, guys. That was the world's fastest speed run, technically speaking. Technically speaking, that speed run only took 60 turns. I wish there was a way for this graph to really show off the amount of gold that I was getting from this. But look, you can see very clearly when the pillage turns were happening. It's like pillage turn, pillage turn, pillage turn, pillage turn, up, 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 up. But that's it. Turn 181 divided by three is about 60. I'm rounding down. Don't at me. This was a 60 turn speed run and you can't change my mind about it. And don't you dare criticize me for clickbaiting you with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this Civ 6 video. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.